Welcome to some sort of odd video reply to the show on Performance Quest wrap up. Here was claiming that Go can do 450 megabytes per second, which is indeed the truth. Um, and I was wondering how this can even be possible because C only does 400 megabytes per second and it's fully unrolled and stuff. So, first of all, um, here you will see how I measure this. So, the Hasher program, which is a Go program, and while recording, uh, it clocks in at 450 megabyte per second. So without recording, it's actually even faster, 470 megabyte per second. Quite incredible. And yeah, I can pipe through as much data as I want. It's just F0 here, as you can see. So that's how I measure this. And it's even MIB. So I, I think I'm measuring wrong things here. Uh, do I? No, that's the... Oh, I always mix this up. I think... That's the digital version, right? So here, one megabyte, 1,024 um, kilobytes, uh, which is fine. I think, I think I'm not mixing this up in this case. So at least the measurements are comparable. Uh, nonetheless, it was pointed out, assembler, by Arthur PRS, that actually I was looking at the wrong thing. You know, I was looking at this generic... Oh, block generic, where is it? At this generic implementation here, which is actually the respective Go implementation of the algorithm. And this is the one I kind of have used. Maybe I've even used an older version of this uh, because I checked out my local repository. And by now, all this stuff here is actually implemented in Assembler. And what they say here is that Actually, instead of, um, you know, when rotating data around, which kind of happens there, apparently, uh, they don't move the data, but they just rotate their um, macro or their registers, basically, so that that way they, they save moves. And this, in turn, is less memory overhead. And this is why they're even faster than the best um, optimized C version that we, that we have currently. Uh, quite amazing. Of course... It's difficult to, to beat that, so let's try to make it use the generic Go version and see how fast that is. So, yeah, I'm just, I'm, you know, what I'm saying is, yeah, I'm just, I'm just stuffing the data in here because now, now I was confused about how my Go path is set and if I can actually build this, if I put it anywhere, and I'm not going to deal with that right now. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, that's a go path thing again. And uh, I don't care. I'm just going to stuff it into my main hasher file here that reads stuff from STD in. And, yeah, package, I don't import that. So I take, maybe I should take the raw version just in case. Here we go. This is that. And then we just have to provide it with the block function somewhere here. And we should be good. So let's put this in. All right. Um, will this work for digest? Yeah, let's see how, how I instantiate it then. But yeah, I think this should be just fine. I shall succeed on that one. I'm at least optimistic about it. Good. Now the generic implementation, which wasn't here, but which was here. That's one of the few times when my brain actually shows it has memory. That's totally awesome. Thank you very much. And here we go with the block function. Block generic. Is this actually called here? No, I think it only calls the block somewhere. Here we go. Yeah, and this is a sign somewhere, so usually this works. I just have to fix this up quickly. Block generic. There we go. And now, in theory, I should be able to instantiate my hasher. So it's not SHA-1 new, but it should just be new, right? Oh, yeah. So in theory, if I rebuild this, this will provide something that works. Imported and not used. Oh, true. Sorry. This is something I honestly dislike. It just it should be a warning. It should be a bloody warning. Because when you, when you try things out and debug things, and you always put this stuff in and out because the compiler harasses you. It's harassment. And honestly, I would think that the Rust compiler harasses you because uh, it has to check so much, and usually you write incorrect code. But actually, it's never harassment when this guy does it because most of the things are warnings. 
which are annoying enough. Hey, we build it. Awesome. Oh, okay, the big moment here. I'm curious. What, what do you say? I said, uh, I think there were a few bets here. Let's check this first. Let's up the tension a bit. Oh, here we go. So I say 250 megabyte per second. And Arthur PRS says 260. Okay. Okay, so who wins this? Actually, nobody wins anything if closer. Oh, come on, 140. So I'm closer, I win. I, I get something here, I get, I get a reward, a badge. <laughs> Go, honestly, I'm gonna make a video that says Go is slow. I had this in my head for a while because whenever I use Go anywhere and uh, compared it to actual C++ and Rust implementations, it was always slower. The only thing when it didn't hold through was this hasher. But now we know that the hasher, uh, the, the generic Go implementation is actually bloody slow. Look at that. So why are people actually using this? You know, Rocket is built using Go. Come on. If they ever handle a lot of data, it's going to suck. I mean, performance is more than twice as slow as the C version of it. Man, I mean, honestly, Rust is the thing. I would definitely prefer Rust because it's much closer to the C version after all. And maybe, you know, I'm trust trusting the compiler guys there that they can can do some magic, but oh, that is so relieving. 145 megabyte per second. And uh, of course, I will reply to this, but also post the video right away. Oh, uh, well, later. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching. That's the result. And uh, there will be more about Rust versus Go, because I think Rust is pretty damn good already.